Okay, separation of variables for rotationally symmetric systems. And it's something that we expect because we know that for rotationally symmetric systems, you know, P squared is going to commute with L. Well, this, this is always true, right? P squared always commutes with L because this is a, what kind of operator is this? Scalar operator. A scalar operator. And whereas, you know, for a spherical symmetric system, V is just a function of R, and therefore this also commutes with L, right? Because, you know, this just depends on, uh, you know, powers of R squared, which is also a scalar. Okay, so um, because of this, we expect there to be a separation of variable of the uh, differential equation. So what is the differential equation? Well, we know what P squared is, so the differential equation is going to be, you know, uh, so we are going to look at the uh, time independent Schrodinger equation. So can someone tell me why is it that we care about the only the time independent Schrodinger equation? Um, because then we can find the propagator and fi find the time dependent one as well after we can right. figure out this. So if we solve the time independent shortening equation, suppose that we have energy eigenstate at time t0, which is given by this. Then any arbitrary time, the, the energy eigenstate at a later time or a previous time is just given by e to the power minus i e t by h bar. And uh, this is something I haven't told you before, but these sort of states have a very special name. They have a name, right? They are called stationary states, okay? So, uh, so stationary, not stationary station, stationary states. Uh, so, you know, this thing is static, but of course the time evolution is captured by just this phase factor. And therefore, although this is not static, its time dependence is very, very almost, it's, it's very simple, right? It's just given by this phase. And that's why it's, the next thing to station uh, to static is stationary. So that's why it's called, but stationary means something that is dynamical, but somehow its state is not changing, okay? So that's a, for example, if I have a star, suppose the star is not rotating, although there is no such star in the universe, but for idealization, let's just imagine an astronomical body that is not rotating. So, you know, the space time around it is, it's called the Schwarzschild metric. It was the first non-trivial solution to Einstein's equation. Uh, so the, and that was, uh, that's, a, so it's called SCH Schwarzschild, it means black shield, okay, metric. And the Schwarzschild metric is an example of a static, uh, you know, space time. But most black holes in the universe that we see, of course, there's stuff around it, but if you, if the stuff, if you ignore the stuff, which, you know, in reality you can't, but mathematically you can, then most black holes are given by, uh, you know, are modeled by a black hole solution, which is a, uh, you know, it's, it's a rotating black hole solution, okay? So the rotation, if the rotation is constant, of course, the space time is not static, but it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's dynamics is, you know, as long as the angular momentum is concerned, but it's dynamics is, is, 
is, is predictable in time. And such space times are called uh, uh, the Kerr-Newman metric. And uh, this is an example of a stationary solution. Okay, so similarly, you know, uh, this is a static solution and this is a stationary solution, okay? Okay, anyway, that was a, a detour because I wanted to introduce to you the, uh, the very important and well-known uh, uh, nomenclature of stationary uh, states.